Welcome to a trading tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I analyze the stock using the uh, volume profile, the composite volume profile to identify potential resistance and support level and also uh, to use it to identify potential price target. Now, I have put out an earlier video that explained this tool that I found on TradingView and I uh, demonstrate how to use it and how I use it. So be sure to watch that video. I will have the link in the description below and also a link at the end of this video. Now, so in this video, we're going to take a look at Tesla, Neo, Peloton, Pelletier, and Apple. Okay, those five stocks. We're going to analyze these stocks, identify potential resistance and support level, and see where they might be going using this fixed range volume profile or a lot of people uh, call it also a composite volume profile. Okay, in this segment, I'm going to go do some of the uh, stock analysis using this uh, tool from uh, TradingView, the uh, fixed range volume profile. I post this chart here on Tesla uh, yesterday and on my Twitter, and you can see uh, the timestamp from this tweak here was uh, a little bit after midnight uh, last, uh, you know, uh, last night there. And, uh, and here's basically what I put in and using this uh, uh, you know, volume profile tool from uh, TradingView and identify a couple of these uh, potential resistant and uh, uh, support zone here. So let me go do it on a uh, up-to-date analysis uh, with the, uh, the current chart here. So here's the chart of Tesla after uh, today's uh, price action here. We're going to go and take a look at that a uh, little bit more detail later on uh, when I uh, zoom it in. But for now, you can see that, uh, remember I was talking about in that video, I said uh, this right here is a little flaw or in error by the uh, TradingView uh, software here. Uh, this should be blank because that's basically it was a gap. And that was prior to, uh, you know, filling in today's price action. So I'm going to show you what basically what I did here, right? This is the, uh, the uh, tool that I'm talking about, the fixed range volume profile tool. And I essentially uh, identified the uh, time span from here to uh, prior to uh, today's uh, price action. So that was on the, on the 16. So I was basically using it on the uh, 16, right? The 15 after the 15. Okay. So, uh, so I identified some of these, uh, low volume zone as the uh, support and uh, potential support and resistance. And let me zoom this in right now to this area here. And also I'm going to use basically the one hour time frame. And I'm going to update. So as you can see, right, the price came down here and tagged this, uh, the edge of this zone, right, that basically filling that gap and then bounces back up. And right now, it seems to be chopping around in this zone here. So let me go and update the profile range here and to uh, cover today. So you can see there's very little volume here at this uh, lower price here, this rig. So you can see that there are uh, not many uh, willing sellers down here. So any uh, buyer that want to buy, they basically have to uh, bid up the price to entice a uh, potential seller. Right, and that's where you get this bounce here. And also you see that uh, came up here to this high volume area. So it kind of chopped around here. And right now, basically it's still inside of this volume zone here, this high volume area chopping around. So those are the area that we see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, acceptance, basically a buyer and seller is willing to do business there. They, uh, you know, a lot of them consider that it's a uh, fair price to conduct business. Right, you know, seller willing to sell at that price and buyers willing to buy at that particular price zone. So we're going to see how long will this chop because you notice that this is the point of control here for this composite and that represents the price with the highest, with the most traded volume for this particular time uh, range here. Okay, so you see that that price here somewhere around 933 uh, or close to 934. So we're going to see uh, next week, in the coming week, will this continue to chop back down here and test this area to see is there a fresh set of, uh, 
I mean, for a seller that willing to sell, if there are more seller appears starting to show up here, then we can see the price uh, go down. But if uh, we get a bounce off at of this point of control, and let's say we are seeing something here and then bounces off, right? We get a rejection here, then we could see the next area of uh, potential uh, rejection is somewhere up at this low volume zone here, right? So we could see that might get a little bit of a rejection come down. But if there are still strong impulsive buying, then we could see it continue to move up and possibly get back up to this zone here at $1,018 level. This high volume no here, that's where the uh, next price zone where there are a lot of sellers and buyers tend to agree on the, uh, the fairness of the price up here, okay? So that's basically what we are looking at right now for the coming week on Tesla. Now, if it uh, doesn't uh, you know, bounce back up and then come back down, once again, we'd be uh, looking at this area to see would it come in and then start chopping around or would it get a rejection back up? And that basically, you know, kind of uh, signify that there are buyers at this level to support the price back up, okay? So that is Tesla. And on this chart, we're looking at NEO. So right now, basically I have a uh, composite uh, volume profile between you know, this point here to this point, okay? And uh, I could even uh, move it a little bit more, uh, you know, forward, but still basically I'm trying to identify these low volume zone here as potential support and resistance level. Okay? You see that uh, we see price, when it come down here on this low volume zone, it got rejected a few times. And when the price bounced back up to this low volume zone, it also got rejected and pushed back down. And you can see right now it's still it is back down at these low volume zone. So right now I'm watching it to see would it be able to get another bounce or would it continue to uh, move down to uh, the next low volume zone, you know, basically the uh, price discovery or the auction process to the next level where there are no, you know, very few acceptance. Uh, you know, so we get these rejection or imposed selling due to the next high volume area where there are a lot of buyer and seller, uh, you know, find acceptance or agreement at those price level. So right now for uh, Neo, we're basically looking at this area here, right, and uh, see would it be able to uh, get a bounce back up to somewhere around this 32, which is this zone here, this uh, low volume zone. And if it could get to and get a rejection back up, then we could see that it could chop up toward this high volume area here, right? This, uh, this high volume area, that's where you get this consolidation or balance area, right? Then it possibly could move up to the 44, 48 area. But if we do not see a rejection, you know, uh, you know to here on a bounce, then we could see a rejection at this zone and then it will push us down here and maybe we could get a, a little bit of a balance uh, you know, balance here down at this high volume zone. So it might get a little bit of a, you know, chop, you know, sideway action before it's uh, moved down to this 24 level or move back up to this, uh, you know, $30 level range. So that's basically what I'm looking at for NEO to see would it be able to, you know, stay above this 30 or would it uh, come down to this uh, 24. Now let's take a look at Apple. You see Apple here got this uh, you know, rejection zone here up near the, uh, the top here. Very little volume got traded up there. So essentially there are not much uh, buyers willing to buy at that level. So the uh, seller uh, that want to sell essentially have to lower the price. And when it came down to this area, it did find some uh, willing buyer and willing seller to do a little bit of a uh, you know, transaction here. Then right now it came down to this low volume, a little bit of a low volume zone. I'm basically looking at this area here. You see, would it come down here and get a rejection back up? Or would it come down here and get a rejection down and push down to this next low volume area? And of course, we're gonna be watching this uh, high volume node here to see would it be able to find 
a little bit of a sideway action somewhere around this 160 level. But if it doesn't find uh, uh, that uh, 160, a uh, little bit of a support level there, then we're essentially looking for somewhere around maybe a 157, 156 area okay, at this area for uh, potential support. And that's basically this low volume zone here. Now we could see a uh, you know impulsive move back up above this uh, this zone here at the 172 area and possibly move back up to the uh, uh, zone up here at this 180 and see all these uh, you know sellers still sitting there or, or there are still lack of buyers up here that's willing to buy at these price and see what it uh, pushes back down or would it uh, find some uh, new set you know fresh buyer that will push the price up uh, higher and break this uh, this high. Now let's do uh, Peloton. Uh, let's set up this uh, Peloton, and I'm gonna do uh, this right here. Uh, first, I'm gonna use a uh, you know composite just to come up to the swing. So I'll be able to see what are some of the uh, high volume no and low volume area uh, on the swing up since it's uh, IPO. So, and I'm going to do this and uh, set up some of these zones here. And right now, a little bit low here, but uh, I'm going to put it up anyway. And I'm going to change this and call this a uh, little bit of a demand zone. So I'm going to mark it as uh, using the blue color. And also, we also have this down here. Right? And I'm basically just marking off without even looking at the price. I'm just looking at the volume profile low volume area and I can just just mark it off and then I go back and take a look at it and then clean it up a little bit to identify which one is uh, valid uh, or have more validity to it than the other one so uh, let me go and uh, do that so here uh, I'm going to change this to uh, you know these uh, supply zone here Okay, so that changes the color. Let me uh, take this off and uh, change the color on this one here as well. Okay, same as here. All right, because I, the reason why I call these uh, supply zone is uh, you can see when it come up here, got rejected and pushed back down. So. Uh, there appear to be some seller up here wanting to uh, sell. So it, uh, basically there are supplies there. And same thing next time come up. And here it went to and it uh, came up here. But once again, you know, when it uh, come back down the next time, uh, there could be a little bit of a supply zone here and same down here. So uh, so right now we're basically looking at that. And, and here are some of the uh, level that I have mark down and you can see some of the price action afterward you know on the way down you can see that it came down to this demand zone got a little bounce you know this low volume zone got rejection got to bounce back up to this high volume area and it kind of chop around and then move back down and then you just kind of chop around in this area here this high volume zone here right this is more like a uh, you know consolidation uh, area Okay, there seems to be buyer and seller uh, find the price to be reasonable at that uh, range that to uh, conduct business, right? But once it gets uh, below that or above that, then we see some price rejection, right? So you can see that, uh, you know, came down and uh, moved down to these uh, demand zone or potential demand zone. So let's go and take a look at that. And let me expand this volume profile, this composite. And let's do it all the way down to this point now. Okay, so you can see the uh, volume still pretty uh, concentrated in this price uh, range here, right? So, uh, so we're basically just kind of hopping around inside of this price range. But once it get below that, then we see some uh, reaction, right? Okay. So right now you can see that. Uh, uh, let's go back and uh, modify or update the. Uh, this zone a little bit, this uh, low volume zone is still valid. So right now it seems to be coming down and uh, getting a you know rejection down at these uh, low volume zone. So uh, let's see with this uh, come back up and get rejected one more time and come down to here 
and then pushes down to possibly lower level here, somewhere around this 14 and 12 level? Or would it be able to, you know, come up, you know, uh, get rejected back up, and then pushes up to this high volume? No, here, this point of control, composite point of control up at uh, 24, and then get back into this area here, this value area, this composite value area, and then start chopping around, come back up to this 29 area. Okay, so that's basically what I'm looking at for Peloton. If we basically, not Peloton, pa <laughs> it's, uh, it's Palatier. Okay, so we're going to take a look at uh, Peloton next, uh, Palatier to uh, see would it be able to come back up to this range here. Because we also, if we uh, update, remember before this was a, a little bit of a uh, supply zone, right? And now we got a, a little bit more of, uh, you know, here in this little bit of a choppiness, you know, a little bit of a high volume area. So we're really keeping an eye on this level here now, right? Somewhere around between 30 and 31. So when the price come up here with the, you know, be able to move to get an impulsive move and uh, move above that or would it get a rejection and pushes it back down okay so that's basically what we are watching these potential low volume and high volume area particularly the low volume the low volume no i use them to uh, identify potential support and resistance because those are the areas that i expect to see price reaction so instead of chopping action and the high volume no i typically use that as potential price target, right? So if it get rejected on these low volume, no. For example, here, so it get rejected here, then basically I'm targeting this high volume area as the uh, potential uh, price target. You see it come to here. So that's basically what I'm using for, you know, these high volume area is for potential price target. Because that's where uh, there are a lot of attraction for those level. Uh, to, uh, you know, essentially there's a lot of liquidity there. There are buyer and seller there to uh, uh, transact and uh, to conduct business. And those are the level that the market tend to uh, attract it to. Now let's take a look at Peloton. You see Peloton here. So right now it's getting back to where uh, it all started pre-pandemic level. Got this sell-off and then it came up and it just went up to uh, $170 uh, level. And that was from uh, what uh, somewhere around 31, 32 area. So that's a, a heck of a move. And uh, basically you look at the fundamental of the company is really hasn't changed that much other than a, uh, basically a beneficiary of the, uh, 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 the pandemic of stay at home type of lockdown uh, period. So obviously when uh, things start to uh, uh, getting under control, although, yeah, right now it's not under control, but at least right now we learn how to live with COVID-19 a little bit more than getting uh, all scared and doesn't know what to do back in uh, February of uh, 2020. So you can see that, uh, you know, these stay-at-home stock being uh, repriced back down to the uh, to the fundamental. So, uh, so right now you see that it's coming back down here. Now, before we even uh, take a look at this uh, price action here, let's uh, go back in time a little bit by moving the composite. Basically, I'm putting the composite uh, volume profile from here to here, and then and, and look at these uh, uh, low volume zone here that I have identified. Basically, should be here close to that and this level here. Okay, so you see that uh, the price came up and got a little rejected here then it moved back impulsively move up and then came back down to this low volume zone because this low volume zone become a demand zone right you got uh, a lot of standing order here possibly you know standing buy order that did not get filled so when it come back down then immediately you see there are buyers here to push it back up so that's what happened when you get these low volume zone is that the price moved to impulsively so quickly that uh, there isn't time for uh, some of these orders here, the limit orders, you know, getting filled. So when it come back down, you see those orders get, get filled. And then next time you see that it also uh, impulsively moved to here at this low volume zone. 
And once again, when it come back down, you see that it also got rejected back up. And as it came up here at this level here, sort of met some seller, got some uh, buyer cutoff. In other words, there are on uh, all that many uh, buyers willing to buy at this level. So then the sellers that want to sell essentially have to lower the price and uh, to find buyers. Okay, so when it come down here, and once again, when it come up here to this zone, it also got rejected. And the chop around here in this high volume area here, this, uh, this volume area here, and it moved to, and next time it moved to this, you know, this area and came down right here where there's also a, you know, little volume, low volume zone. So when it come down, next time when it come down, you see that it also got rejected back up because that become a little bit of a demand zone on the way up. When we get a rejection back up of bounds, and when we come up here near the top, you essentially see that once again, we have buyer cutoff. In other words, lack of buyers up here. We have sellers, so the seller have to lower their asking price to find buyers. And when it come down here, we essentially found some remnant, uh, you know, we found some more buyers back in this low volume area, which was a demand zone, right? Because it came down, got a bounce, came down, got a bounce. Now, the next time it came down, did not get a bounce, it went to, and then come back up. And now this low volume zone became resistant or a supply zone. Now we got sellers here willing to sell up here, waiting to sell, and then start pushing the price down. Okay, so that's basically what happened. And now let me go and update the volume profile all the way to the uh, present and then see what the profile looks like. Well, the profile didn't change that much, right? We still have this low volume zone and this low volume zone down here, okay? And also this low volume zone. But you can see that the price came up, almost got up to here. Well, here we got rejection and here we got rejection come down here. Then we found some buyers down at this zone, okay? And got it rejected back up. And then once again, we came up to this low volume zone here and found seller, you know, got rejected back down. Okay. And then once again, when it came down here on this demand zone here, right, this low volume zone, and we got some buyer and bid it back up. Then all of a sudden we gap down. All right. So then this zone here is still left open. So there is still a possibility that the price will come back up and test these zone, these low volume zone to see is the seller up here now to, uh, you know, reject the price back down? Because obviously there could be a lot of seller that want to get out, didn't have a chance to get out because of the big, huge gap down on the price. So basically that's what we're looking at right now. And here's this volume point of control. This is the level with the highest traded volume, somewhere around $44, $43.90. So, uh, so we're going to watch and see with this thing be able to get back up above this high volume point of control and then push us up. Because here we have a low volume zone here. Okay? It's basically getting a little bit of a rejection and then pushing us back up right now. Okay, and that is pretty much near the uh, uh, you know pre-pandemic level here. But if it uh, come down, come to, then don't be surprised to see prices come all the way back down to this 20 level. Now we do have some, you know, high volume no here that could, uh, you know, provide some uh, temporary support here. In other words, price could come down here and then start chopping and then consolidating and build a base for the uh, next move up back and, uh, you know, and that maybe uh, next time it will come up and test these low volume zone. So that's how I use the uh, composite volume profile or the fixed range uh, volume profile to identify the swing and then within those swing we identify the uh, low volume zone and some of the high volume no okay, to uh, uh, provide us with potential support and resistance zone with uh, possible uh, price target you know on those uh, high volume no okay so I hope uh, you find this uh, useful and uh, to learn a little bit more uh, go and watch the video on uh, how I use this tool on uh, TradingView, and it's completely free. 
So be sure to uh, smash that thumbs up and help me promote and share this video. Thank you for watching and stay safe.